Aaron says, we're debating between SharePoint Online and an on-premises solution. Ooh, somebody is still talking about on-prem. Our decision <laughs> hinges on factors like cost, maintenance, accessibility, and data control. Can someone share insights or experiences on the long-term implications, especially regarding data security, reliability, and overall cost of ownership for each option? Where do, where do you start? It's like... Really? Well, well yeah. first, first, let me say, besides <clears throat> the cost side of it, getting in and talking about maintenance, accessibility, uh, uh, some uh, there's still some differences with data control there, but security, reliability, um, those aspects of it, I mean, the cloud, that's where you get the savings. I, I mean, I, again, unless you're talking about, if you're looking at specific features, like it's more feature rich today for the cloud version than it is for the on-prem. So on-prem lag so. behind. Um, and, and then one of the huge, the arguments, like I've been selling people on cloud literally since uh, E2Open, you know, February of 2001. It was my first company where we were selling people on a dedicated or private cloud collaboration solution and can have them change that. a few thousand power supply <laughs> fans. They'll, they'll yeah, learn but, quickly. Well, but it's, uh, you know, right. I mean, that's the, the whole point is that you're, you're moving the cost of having just the knowledge, the expertise in house, plus the, those physical servers and all of that. I mean, there's a yeah. whole other, you know, uh, uh, you know, cast of characters to maintain the hardware. Um, and so you're pushing that over to the cloud. So uh, it, it was when a lot of the cloud-based services launched, you got reduced functionality, you lost data control, um, you relied on like your SLAs with your customers and security, like all of that you had to ensure, you still need to ensure that stuff is in place with any vendor, but again, I mean, I would argue that Microsoft's uh, adherence to those standards with all of their certifications, everything else is much more robust than you attempting to do it on your own. Yeah. Well, and I, the point I, that I, I was going to make that you said, Christian, 100%, people, the skill set to maintain an on-prem environment mm -hmm. is dying out. People, uh, I can tell you that from the MCT community, they're not keeping up to speed, they're they are, they're deprecating the, all of those. The, you're saying we're going in, entering the idiocracy already? That's what you're saying? Yeah, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> the days of hardware maintenance are crap as they come to an end. That have yes. with our prem. So yeah. it's, there's, it's not worth it for people to keep up those skills because they, they're they looking at supporting, the people that work in that space are looking at supporting and working in the cloud space. They're yeah. They're letting all those other ones kind of, slide by the wayside and, not really and the technology to support it like rsa to get into it if they're working from home you know i've got a i just had a client they had 2019 2013 2000 2009 13 and 2009 sharepoint we're moving to the cloud and i've literally just lived the plane the pain extensively in this it was absolutely horrendous just horrendous and the, you kind of then go but hang on a second if you're you're much better off to actually pay for a solution that's going to really lock down things around security or knowledge management or whatever it is you need on top of sharepoint online then you are to have two separate solutions and people can't find their information is it there or is it there you just yeah. have it in one place and then look at what levels you need to put on top of it around, you know, classifications and, and yeah, all that security stuff, Christian, you were just talking, I won't go into it all again. But I, I, I don't get it. Don't even go there. Because like, you eventually just have to bring it over anyway. Well, yeah. again, I, I think asking the question around this, it's almost like an it's an old school question about hardware maintenance like those sides of it like like that's we're 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 past that most organizations are past that i mean the cloud is ma very mature around those areas so it's not even a question of whether you'll save money uh and time and effort and the knowledge like you're not going to find the people that you need to mm -hmm. i mean to everybody's points like that those people are gone they've moved mo moved on where you need to focus, and this is true whether on-prem, 
It's just you spent so much time in the past. The IT pro role was keeping servers running instead of focusing on are we getting the max value out of the platform itself? Are we best leveraging the technology? Now you don't have to worry about the server side of that. You need somebody that understands the services and there's the, the admin side of it. That's not what I'm talking about. But you can focus much more on the actual experience and what value and are we achieving the out the desired outcomes. So Aaron's not deploying SharePoint for the purpose of deploying SharePoint. It's trying to, his company's trying to do something. And you can do more of that something by yeah. spending time on using the technology rather than keeping servers running. That's my point. Yeah, and if you're looking at costs, if that's a factor, right, you're going to pay somebody 100000 plus to, to just have the skill set to maintain that however much you've spent on the hardware and, man, and the power and all of that to keep those servers running. How well, many licenses are going to pay somebody for that cheap? To too, get so that. expensive. Exactly. How many yeah. E5 yeah. licenses? I'm just trying to use a round number. How many E5 licenses can you get for 100000 a year and get all of that? and not have to have somebody that, that has to maintain that person. Just trade that yeah. one person's salary for the benefits of however many yeah, I'm, people. I'm just saying, I, I don't think in the United States, at least, you're gonna find somebody for that cheap as nope. 100,000. Uh -uh. Nope. You know, and then it's then it's of course, yeah, it's the, the, the weighted salary of that with everything else that's needed, so. The, the only area where I see a provision for people staying on premise is increased need of control. So if you need control of the full admin center behind the scenes all the way down to the data tables for whatever reason, and there are certain places that have this requirement, um, it's rare and it's, in my opinion, to some degree unnecessary, but if they do have a real need for that level of control, you will not get that in the cloud. So you have to stay on premise for that. And the other piece is if you have a true CapEx, so large, gigantically large companies that have their own hardware already, that have a rule around CapEx versus OpEx um, in terms of depreciating their assets, and they're still following that hardware lifecycle rule, um, it's not going to be about cost. It's going to be about control. So if they stay on premise, the the only reason that I'm seeing people stay on premise anymore is around control. And if there is a need for control, then they will do that. And if not, then on or then online is the right answer. Like being able to push a timer job when you want it to go and not have to wait, whatever it happens in 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. And there are, you know, for there is help that's out there. I mean, if you go and look at, I mean, there's just, I'm looking at multiple articles written on CapEx versus OpEx of SharePoint on-prem versus online. There's a lot of data out there. I mean, I used to write about this when I was at Microsoft and we were, again, those initial customers into what is now Office 365 trying to convince them to move to let go of their servers and move their data across. And it took years. In fact, Jeff Teeper and Microsoft just, he mentioned this, I interviewed him last week over in Amsterdam. He brought up the, the fact that it wasn't until where he felt that the, uh, uh, the market had shifted and people were accepting of the cloud. He says that was about 2017. Mm -hmm. Again, that I, and I, I agree with him that cloud shift, it was, I would say maybe 2015 to 2016, but he was still hearing it from the largest of enterprises. And again, I started trying to sell people on the cloud, my own experience in 2001, and it took 15, 16 years um, for oh. the market to move across. Agreed. And I worked with, you know, fed, federal government and helped move them into the cloud. And, you know, you're talking about security and trust. If, if the, and I can attest, the highest levels of our government are using the Microsoft Cloud. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, of course, it's in GCC high and it's restricted more than the normal. But if if you're looking for security, they, it's there, right? And if, if your data needs to be secure, if that's the trade-off, control or security, you know, yep. control or security, accessibility, the cost, the blah, blah, blah. Let's list all of these. I, I think the cloud kind of screams at the top of the pile there. 
And I would say even even more secure than uh, you know some of the U.S. entities. There are other international, like German, uh, a government that is has even higher standards. I would argue, wow. um, again, is using um, the the you know SharePoint in the cloud, Microsoft 365 in the cloud. So. Yeah, I, I mean, Aaron, I mean, that's it's a it's kind of a big question there. Um, again, there is some information that's a good you just go and search on CapEx and OpEx um, comparison between SharePoint on prem and online. Um, I believe there's I've not looked for any out there in a while, but out on adoption at Microsoft.com, there's also some similar the cloud argument. Um, there's some documentation out there to help make that case of moving to the cloud. But um, if we've not answered your question, if you have refining questions, follow-ups, then please comment and we'll respond.